So in our last video, we created our player detection scripts and added the transitions to our state macro. So in this video, we're gonna look at creating our chase state so that when our player gets near and can be seen by the NPC, the NPC will chase after the player or pursue them across the terrain. So let's go ahead and get started. Now it turns out that our chase state is gonna be very similar to our wander state in that we are gonna set a destination for the nav agent. But in this case, rather than creating a random position, we're gonna to move towards the player's position. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna copy from my wander state into my chase state. And let me know in the comments down below if you like this or you'd rather have me go through it step by step. So I'm gonna double click on my wander state and I'm gonna copy everything that's here. Go back to my state macro. I'm gonna go into my chase state. I'm gonna double click to go full screen. I'm gonna move these over and I'm gonna paste in all the logic from my wander state. I'm gonna move that over. Now I've copied in an update event. So I'm gonna delete the one that was in here when I created the chase state. And I'm also not gonna use this on enter state event. So I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna move my on exit state event up here just to keep it tidy and drag my update event down there. All of this code here, this was all generating that random position and I no longer need that. So I'm gonna delete that code and rather than a random position, I'm gonna get the position of the player and that's what I'm gonna to move towards. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, I'm gonna get scene variable. I'm gonna get the player scene variable, drag that out, go look for the transform position, and I'm gonna get the position of that. So what this is gonna do is return the position, the current position of the player. I'm gonna drag that into my nav mesh sample position. Now you could argue that I don't need to sample the position again because the player is going to be on the nav mesh. So I'm pretty much guaranteed that this position is on the nav mesh. I like the consistency. It's not 100% necessary, but I'm gonna leave it as is. And also this random cooldown, this random weight that I have here in the middle, we don't need that anymore. When the player gets near the NPC, we want the NPC to chase after them immediately. Now maybe you wanna wait, maybe you don't. I'm gonna to choose to remove the weight and I'm gonna connect up the flow like so. And I'm gonna move a few blocks around just to keep it a little bit tidier, a little bit more compact. Now that's all we need for our NPC to chase after our player. But we're gonna do one more bit of logic before we're done with this state. And that is this on exit state. Now when we leave this state, whether that's to go back to wandering around or maybe it's going into the attack state, we want our NPC to stop. We don't want it to continue to pursue the player. We want it to stop and shoot or just stop and start wandering around. So what we're gonna do is set the nav mesh agent's destination to its current location. And that has the effect of just stopping the nav mesh agent where it is. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, search for nav agent, set destination, like so. I'm gonna connect up the flow. And the target in this case is the position of this transform. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, transform, position, and get. And that's all there is to it. This is gonna allow the NPC to chase after our player when they get near and when they're visible. So let's go back to our game view and see how this works. So as I get near the NPC, he's gonna to start to wander towards me. And you'll notice occasionally he'll overshoot because I'm a long ways away and he's trying to move towards that position. But in general, the NPC is gonna follow me around and pursue me as you would expect in a game of this type. So there you go. We've added to our NPCs AI, we've got a little bit more realistic behavior and our game is slowly coming to life. All in all, compared to our last couple of videos, that was pretty short and pretty painless. It's always nice when you can reuse some code and get added functionality to your game. In our next video, we're gonna create the flow macro that's gonna allow our player to shoot where our cursor is pointing on the screen. We're gonna use physics rigid bodies to create projectiles that will move across the screen and act as a bullet. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you'll join me for my next video.